Well, I started smoking pot when I was like 13. And then I tried acid and all that. The 80s, I went through a big coke binge for a couple years. But um, the pain pills all started with the doctors. I needed back surgery, and all they did was just shove prescriptions at me. To make a long story short, he became obsessed with her. And when she didn't want it to go anywhere, he just couldn't accept that. And when I got up and I opened the door, my mom just screamed he killed her. And I mean, the whole way down the road, I'm thinking about how I'm going to kill him. And I mean, I want him to suffer for what he did. Terry tells us about her addictions and the toll it has taken on her life. But when her daughter, Sierra Hammonds, was murdered by an obsessed psychopath, her view of life changed. She shares with us how that night unfolded, the impact it has had on the family left behind, and the warning signs, if any, that could possibly help the next innocent person from being killed. Welcome to Chopping It Up. Thank you for coming, Terry. We've been Pleasure trying to, to be here. We've been trying to get this together for like three weeks, right? Yeah. And you got sick and yeah, but I appreciate you making it happen. Off work today. Yes, my day off. Right on. Um, so when we first started talking, you started talking about just coming out of the pain management clinic. Yeah. Let's start right there. How long has that been? A month. Okay. And then we went to the next thing, which was like withdrawals and how are you coming away from that? Yeah, that was not an issue okay. coming off. There were just three pills a day, so it was really nothing. Okay, three fives? Yeah, nothing right, to me. Right, right. A past drug addict, that's just... <laughs> I feel like your withdrawals get a little easier as we get older, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it's because we we understand that there is an end to it. Yeah. When you're young and you're so scared of that fear, you don't want to stop, so you keep on doing it. Right. But once you've quit two or three times, now you know that it is possible and you can't get away from it. Exactly. As sad as that sounds. Yeah. Right. So when did you start using? Like, how old were you when you started using? Uh, well, I started smoking pot when I was like 13. And then I tried acid and all that. The 80s, I went through a big coke binge for a couple years. But um, the pain pills all started with the doctors. I think it was late 80s. I needed back surgery, and all they did was just shove prescriptions at me. Um, so it, it all really started there. Right. And then you've had shoulder surgeries and stuff, too. So Nine shoulder surgeries. I've got two artificial discs in my neck. I have a knee replacement. Yeah, I've had like 16 surgeries. Mm. And that's what the, that's what the recent uh, medications was for, too, because they... The shoulder, oh, yeah. Same thing over and over. So you got tired of that, moved on to what? What did you say it was? TD Red. TD Red, and then you said it's not Kratom. No, it's not. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce what's in it, tenactopine or whatever, but this was used in other countries for like depression and anxiety and stuff. Okay. But uh, it really relieves pain and you focus, you're really clear, you have energy all day, but when you lay down at night, you go to sleep. Hmm. So you're still taking that? Yeah. Plan on keep taking it or? I don't want to. Okay. Um, it's just I'm going to have to be able to take a week off because it is not a good withdrawal. I went through it before. I cleaned up from it for about two weeks. Then when I decided to get out of pain management, I went back to it because I'm working with a disabled man. He's paralyzed on one side. Okay. <clears throat> and it's, you know, it's, my shoulder is painful. It causes me issues. So it's like my go-to, get up in the morning, cup of coffee, my pills, Zoom, I'm ready to go ready for to the go day. Again. Yeah. And do you still smoke? Yeah. So you also said that uh, you quit pain management because they wanted to take the weed away? Yeah, they would not. I had to stop smoking weed to get in there and get on the medication but the medication wasn't helping and you know 
they're limited on how much they can give you. And I, it wasn't worth it at all. Okay. And also, just like if you've done any pills before, you know that the first one's pretty good, then it takes two, then it takes four. Yes. And it just keeps on going. So if they're only limiting you at that, which is good because they're not giving you too much, but right. it's not doing what you want it to do. No, no, not at all. And this gas station stuff is. is. It, yeah. It, you know. I, as bad as I hate to say it, I don't wish it upon anyone, but it's perfect for me. Okay. You know? Do you have to double down with that, too? Is it getting more and more? I started taking three a day when I first started, but when I quit pain management, now I'm taking six a day. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in all that pain, right? It's like weed can't satisfy all that. No. But the weed still helps. Yeah. The weed helps with the eating and the sleeping. Doesn't help a lot with the pain. The only thing I've ever noticed weed helps with pain wise is like a toothache. Okay. Um, but the limited amount they gave me just didn't touch it. It wasn't worth giving up the pot at all. Especially when I knew I could go in any of these smoke shops and get the other stuff. Right. Yeah, I have another buddy that takes a lot of Kratom. And I've taken the Kratom before. It's easy to to find a dependency on that shit real quick, too. I didn't like the Kratom. It works on the same receptors, same opiate yeah. receptors as everything else, which is probably the same thing as whatever this is you're taking. I'm curious. I'm going to look into it because I'm just yeah. curious of what it is. I think I watched a video one time where they talked about it being some plant or something that was illegal somewhere else and i don't really know yeah but i have to say uh i, I will definitely look because i'm curious so is it like a does it help with anxiety or is it just the pain that it helps with it, it it makes me it takes care of the pain it gives me energy and i'm really focused okay it, it it's good but it's bad you know and you still work every day too right yeah i work six days a week right we were just talking a minute ago about we are getting old. Yeah. yeah. I was 62. Right. So, well, 10, I'd say about 10 years ago, we was running around shooting Delauders together. Yeah. Every time I would get my script, we yep. would definitely hook up and sit down and get tore the fuck up. Yep. We did. Bad news, huh? So much better life without all that chase, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And the excitement that came when I would go get them, and we would call, and we'd be like, "Yeah, let's go do all this." I, I don't miss that. No, I don't. I don't miss the waiting around, the looking for it. I don't miss any of that. The chaos is definitely the part that makes you start thinking about moving on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. When the doctors are supplying it to you, it's so much easier just to stay in that in that rut. Yeah. Yeah. If you can keep enough pills for the month. Yeah. See, I, I, I'd i party it up first couple days, then gone, you know. And then sick for two weeks. It They didn't. Well, the last time that we did it, my last script, we did 90 of them in two days hmm. between the two of us. And we were both so sick, couldn't use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. We swore we would never. Yeah. And they definitely do that, don't they? Mm -hmm. like no bathroom and just make you feel like, oh, my God, bro, if I don't go to the bathroom, I'm going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it gets bad. It, yeah. It will stop you up for sure. Yeah, man. Uh, and what are you doing, Uber now? Or just no, the... I'm just just taking care right. of the paralyzed man. Well, he's a family member. It's my stepfather's brother. Okay. And he's 67, he had a stroke, and it left him paralyzed on one side. So the state pays, or he has funds that takes care of you for taking yeah, care of him? Yeah, the right. state Makes pays it worth someone, it. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. At least you're helping somebody out and being able to take care of yourself at the same time. Yeah. Because I remember he was doing the Uber thing. Uber and DoorDash, and it was great when the coronavirus came out. I bet. I made good money, but it was dwindling down. Yeah. Yeah, because the economy is so crazy. Everything costs so much now. Yeah. Changes it up. I mean, like my neighbor, her son is autistic, and she has to door dash him fries to his school every mm -hmm. day because she doesn't have a car right now. $15. Hmm. For some fries. For some French fries. Why has she got to send him fries? He's autistic, and he only eats certain foods. Wow, okay. And so without a car, she's got a door dash. School won't help with that. Uh-uh. Uh, 
Yeah. So it cost her fifteen dollars a day to get him a two dollar order of French fries. You know, <laughs> seventy five bucks a week. That's three hundred dollars a freaking a month. Yeah. Yeah, she's hoping for snow days. Yeah. 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 She, don't, she don't. She don't like it when he goes to school. Um. So let's talk about let's talk about kids, man. I know it's going to be a hard subject, but uh, you got two kids. Yes. Nate, Nate and Sierra. And uh, Sierra is no longer here. No. Because of some scumbag took yep. it upon himself to take her away from here. And we said it's been, what, five years? Mm, in July, yeah. So what happened there, man? Like, I don't even know the full story. I was there for the funeral and stuff, but I couldn't ask questions. And You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, well, she met this guy. Her and the children's father lived together, but she hadn't been real happy. And um, the kid's dad wanted her to stay. He didn't want her to move out. He wanted her to stay and let her do her thing. Anyway, she uh, met this guy. And to make a long story short, he became obsessed with her. And when she didn't want it to go anywhere, he just couldn't accept that. So um, she was at work. She was bartending at the ladder house in Martinsburg. And for some reason up there, the coolers outside, she had to go out the back door to get more beer. And um, when she didn't come back in, one of the guys went out to check on her. And this guy named Chris, he shot the guy, he shot my daughter, then he shot himself. Jesus. Which I'm thankful he shot himself. Yeah, right. I didn't know that. Um, the child under me that's autistic, he like kicks the wall at nights and stuff. So my mother was beating on the door at four o'clock in the morning, and I was kind of ignoring it, thinking it was maybe him. And when I got up and I opened the door, my mom just screamed he killed her. And... Um, I kind of lost it and uh, didn't know the story. We got everything together and went up to the house where they lived. And I mean, the whole way down the road, I'm thinking about how I'm going to kill him. And I mean, I want him to suffer for what he did. Of course. And then when we got there, I was told that he had killed himself. Um, telling the kids was horrible. Just horrible. No, like their little brains couldn't even, how old were they? Let's see, eight and six. So just to be clear, she had a boy and a girl, right? Yes. God, eight and six. I mean, they can't even really comprehend that at that point, right? Well, Chloe, my granddaughter, her best friend across the street, her mother there were two little girls across the street. They went with their mother for the weekend. The mother stabbed one of them to death like 20-some times, and the other girl escaped. So Chloe had experience, per se, by that incident okay. with her friend. But um, your mother, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, man. Yeah, my, my kids were very young when their mother was taken as well. Not the same way, but it fucked them both up. Yeah. Know, oh, yeah. I know it fucked them both up. To this day, they have different things that I can see that I think would be really different about them. Oh, yeah. If their mom would have been here. Yeah. I can see that with Chloe and Landon a lot. I mean, Nick's doing a good job, you know, providing, but. He see, was crushed, man. You could see it in his face at the funeral. He was fucking crushed. Him and my son just, they grieved through alcohol. That's how they both handled it. They both got DUIs. And my son, he was not a good drinker. His anger came right. out. He was. It changes him completely. He thought it should have been him because Sierra was never into drugs or anything. Nathan was in and out of jail, into drugs, and it crushed him. He, you know, he thought it should have been him, not her. That's survivor's guilt. Yeah. And um, not even being there, but survivor's guilt based on relationship. Yeah. It, it really tore him up. And it's been 
I think about eight months now, he hasn't touched a drop. We had an incident where I ended up going to jail for the first time. Okay. I just had enough of him being drunk, and we got into it, and I threw bananas at him. And the idiot had called the law, and they had to arrest me. They thought it was funny. The one cop said he would have beat him upside the head. The magistrate thought it was funny. And the judge that threw it out of court thought it was funny. <laughs> but they had to arrest you because it was domestic violence. Yes. and uh, Somebody but, has to go to jail in Virginia for domestic violence. Yeah. But it was worth it to me because he hasn't drank a drop since. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And you didn't even really have to pay a consequence. Everybody laughed. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Well, that's good. At least he's been straight. And I yeah. talked to him. I'm, you know, I'm hoping he comes on. Yeah, he's going to. I think he's to. got a lot of good shit to say. And I know what you mean about him changing different, you know, going from one to the other with the drinking. Yeah. You know. The drinking was the worst thing, you know. He, some people are okay to drink, but his anger was just above and beyond. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with something like that. Like, he was already dealing with emotional shit, and then you're taking this thing that changes you to a whole nother person. Until Mama had to whoop him with bananas. Yep. <laughs> so what did you do to deal with all that, man? Did you go into a hole like that again, or did you? No. Um, the first, until she was buried, I had an adrenaline. I was kind of numb, hmm. but I just did what I had to do to make sure everything was right. Um I can see that. I, I, I can see that from you for sure. I mean, I usually smoke a half a pack of cigarettes a day. I was smoking a pack plus a day. A lot of people can't eat. I was eating everything. Hmm. Um, it was just it, nothing really hit me hard till everything was over. Okay. I was working on shock and adrenaline, basically. Up until the point that... Did you bury her, cremate her? How Cremated her. Okay. Yeah. So once all that was done, funeral was said and done, and you felt like you could sit down for a minute. That's when. Then, then it, this, it changed like how you felt? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I had to accept the fact that there was a reason for all of this, whatever it may be. You know, I don't know that I'll ever know, but I was not going to put myself in a hole and ruin myself over that, you know, I just had to, I had to accept it and move on. She wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Right. And I was trying to be strong for Nathan and the kids and, you know, but it, it's strange. My life is so different now. I look at life different and I don't know. I can't cry. Hmm. I, I can't I can't cry anymore. It's strange. Well, that is weird, isn't it? Dried you up, huh? Yeah. And that was like the one thing in life that I didn't ever want to have to go through. That was the one thing. God, please just don't ever take my kids. Right. And, uh, you know, you don't bury your kid they're supposed to bury you yeah. you're not supposed to bury them exactly yeah so a, it changed me majorly in a lot of ways yeah it's a scary thought man scary thought and like up until that moment that it happens you have no understanding of what it could or would or will do to you no not at all the thought never entered my mind if I ever would have thought something would have happened to one of my kids, it would have been Nathan, all the shit he was into, in and out of jail, drugs, going to Baltimore, you know. But instead, it was another person's actions. Yes. It wasn't, I mean, Nathan's actions was his consequence, but this motherfucker here was on a different level. Yeah. Was he like, did you know anything? Did she say that he was doing weird shit like they had dated and she no she took me she wanted me to meet him and they took me to breakfast one morning and he seemed just like your typical guy you know okay. um she never told me things that were going on 
I've heard some stories since, but um, he was stalking her. He had tracker on her car. He had threatened if she called the police or anything, he was going to kill Nick and the kids. Um, and, and he and had I, it planned. He people had take, everything. People say threats like that every fucking day. Yeah. And we just blow that shit off like it don't mean nothing, man. And then when it when it should be taken seriously like this right here, while well, it's... Yeah. So he was definitely out there. Did he have any charges or anything like that? Like, was Not it... that I know of. It's strange. It's almost like everything was covered up. He had done his will and le left his ex-wife everything. He didn't have kids. Um... He was a businessman in Culpeper. He had a, I don't know what kind of business. I want to say towing, but I'm not exactly sure. Hmm. But I couldn't find anything on him. I couldn't find any funeral arrangements or anything on the guy. Hmm. Family must have kept that shit secret because of what he did. They yeah. Don't, I they don't want nobody to know, you know, know where that was happening or... I mean, did it seem like they had money? He did, yeah. He gave her a credit card and was always throwing money at her, buying her jewelry and stuff hmm. like that. Wow, that's crazy too then, huh? So it's like you kind of automatically think about these slumlordish type people doing shit like that. But this was a well-to-do businessman with money and, yeah. and been married before and just got overly obsessed. Yeah. And couldn't handle the fact that she didn't want him. Yes. That's fucking horrible shit, man. I think he called Nick like two hours before he killed her. And I think he had called Nick other times saying shit. So I guess Nick just ignored it. But he told Nick that if he couldn't have her, nobody could. Hmm. Yes, I guess that goes to say, like when motherfuckers say stuff like that, take it serious. Yeah, like yeah. you can't be, you can't, Not, you can't let motherfuckers say some shit like that to your girl, your daughter, your whatever. You, if you're a female, and just not take it serious. Yeah, nowadays you got to take that shit seriously. And that's crazy because that, that's fucking creepy, man. I got goosebumps thinking about it because I've got so many friends, guy friends, who would say the same fucking thing, like. Uh, that they've told their girl that. Yeah. You know? And and that's the scary shit. Yeah. Like, you just don't know how real that can get and how fast. I mean, that fucking gunshot is quick. Yeah. And it changed how many lives in you around you. Just A lot. Forever, yeah. You know, and not for the better. No, and he took two children's mother. I mean, come on, dude. If you got an issue, take yourself out, you know. Uh Right. Good point. Why couldn't you just not live with it? Yeah. Why would you feel so greedy and selfish that she can't be happy either? Her kids can't be happy. Jesus. It's a warped individual. Yeah, it is. But the thing of it is, when I met him, if you met him, you would have never thought he would do something like that. And that's why you got to take everything serious. Crazy fucking world, man. Yeah. It's creepy. Yeah, but, uh, okay, so moving forward, man, like, what do you do now? What do you do now to, to deal with that? Like, is is the time something that seems like it's helping us since it's been five years? No. Okay. I mean, I think about her every day, several times a day. Um. It... it like, I have a friend who just lost his son. I said, I'm not going to lie to you. It doesn't get better. It may get easier, but it never gets better. Right. You know, that's your child. It's like a piece of your soul missing, right? Yeah. It's like there's, yeah. A, there's a puzzle piece missing to the, to the rest of you. Yeah. And you, it changes you. It, it just automatically changes you. The way you view things... You know, the way I talk to people, because I never know when it's going to be the last time I talk to them. Very good point. Somebody else said that recently on one of these two, Sarah, I believe. It's like she makes sure that, you know, every time she leaves somebody's love you and yeah. care for you and never 
don't ever leave on a bad a bad note type thing. So yeah, that's a that's a good way to live. Period. Yeah, like my mom wasn't really talking to my daughter much at the time of her death because mm. my daughter was working in a bar. She had gotten her degree to be a dental assistant, and she was going to do that when the kids went back to school in August. But this was July. So I think about that every day. My mom has to live with the fact that they weren't even on speaking terms. And I just don't want that, you know, with anybody I love or my friends or anything. Right. Yeah, I, I kind of reamended my dad's relationship the last six months he was alive. And even though it's just like, whatever now it's like i'm glad i did that at least i talked to him at least i didn't yeah hang him out the dry or whatever uh, hmm. but i spent for the last two weeks it was odd she came every day but mondays when the pool was closed we were hanging out every day going up to the pool she never told me anything negative. She didn't get into telling me any of the threats, but she knew me and she knew better. She knew that if she told me, I was going to take matters into my own hands. Yeah, you would do something about it. Yeah, yeah. She didn't want to. Hmm. But at the same time, too, her knowing that you would have helped, she just didn't want to put you in danger. Maybe. And maybe she didn't feel like she was in that much danger. Like like you said, your read on this guy said he was just a normal motherfucker. Yeah. And like her first boyfriend, when they broke up, he was going to kill himself and this, that, and the other. She had heard all this, and I don't think she thought it was serious. Right, so it had been something she had seen before come from a dude. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, yeah, it's a good point too, isn't it? But you never know which one to take serious and which one not. No, huh? you don't. Right. The other dude just kept on going, and this guy destroyed lives. Well, shit, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, life goes on, though, doesn't it? You can't stop that part. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> you, I had to keep going for Nathan, for the kids, you know, I know you probably stepped up as a grandmother figure too. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Mom's not going to be here. I got to do extra. And I look at Chloe and I see Sierra. Of course. I mean, one hundred percent. Their father can't handle it. Um, he didn't even want to go to his own daughter's funeral. He's a piece of work himself. But um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I hate funerals too, but Jesus. Yeah. Even if I just sat in the corner and cried myself to, to death, I would be there. Hmm. Huh. That's tough. Well, but shit, you, man. you got to pick up and you got to go on. You got to keep living. Right. You can't, you can't let it beat you. And I enjoyed the memories. You know, they mean so much. So you do learn to like look back and just remember the good shit. Yeah. And that's the only shit you'll remember, right? Yeah. I have dreams. She comes to me in my dreams. Um, some of it's disturbing. Some of them kind of fuck me up for that day. But. Weird. Yeah. Um, kid's mother died when I was in prison. Four years I had dreams. Four years. Horrible dreams. Wake up in a sweat dream. Mm. Uh, and every time it was something that separated us. Sometimes it was a physical barrier like a prison wall. And sometimes it was an emotional barrier like she didn't want to be with me. Or I was fighting with her and I didn't want to be with her. And then I'd wake up with this detachment from all that. Like, oh, my God. Like, what the fuck? And then one time I had a dream. I was playing handball in prison a lot. And I had a dream. And me and her were playing tennis. And everything was golden. We were happy playing. I don't know why we never played tennis. <laughs> what the fuck were we playing tennis for? But we were playing tennis and the world was great and it was rainbows and, and sunshine and I haven't dreamed about her since. Hmm. It's weird. I had a dream the other night that Sierra was alive. 
She was in the hospital, but she was going to die. It was just, I don't know. It fucked me up mm. all day, all day. Because that emotion is so real when you wake up from that. Though. It is. It is. It's so real. I don't care if you know you were asleep and you say that was a dream. That emotion sticks there. Yes, it does. It stays there for a minute, man. That's so weird, too, isn't it? Is that them reaching through us? Is that our subconscious? Like, is that spirituality? Is that religion? It's so crazy to, yeah. to really start thinking about that. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, I'm not a spiritual person, and I'm definitely not a ghost-type person. But if they're like spirit and, and soul is watching, seeing from some other place, then why wouldn't they be able to tap into you sometimes? Yeah. Sometimes that could be that gut feeling that you get that says, don't do this or don't do that, or I don't know. And I've heard people say, well, I get visits in my dreams, you know. Uh, like I said, memories, watching videos of her and stuff, it, it, I don't mind it. It gives me comfort. I get a chuckle out of something, remembering, you know. And with the kids, I always keep her alive, you know. She's their mother. She's always going to be their mother, whether she's here or not. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that some of what I do, too, with my kids is I, I try to drill the good things in their head. There's certain things that I still remember. Paige will do something, and it'll be just like her mom. And mm -hmm. I just, you just can't help it. Um, but then I'll try to give her some little, you know, some little nugget that lets her know that. And that lets her know when she does that, you're being your mom. Yeah. And yeah. I want her to carry that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough shit, man. It's, it's hard because it definitely was really hard on Paige to not have her mom there. Um, especially as a little girl, you know, and I know it's hard on Corey too. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think Landon took Landon. It, it affected Landon worse than Chloe. Okay. Um, Chloe has just picked up. She's strong willed. She's strong minded, just like her mother. She's kind of picked up being the mother of the house and Landon just kicked back. He really, really misses her. Um, Landon doesn't ask for things, but he said that he wants a necklace. I have a ring, and it has my mom and I have these, and Sierra's ashes are in them. Well, Landon wants one with his mother's ashes, so their birthdays are coming up, and so I'm going to do that but for them. But it really has affected him, really. Hmm. Yeah. And, you know, their prom and this, that, and the other, they're not going to have their mom to see. She's missing all that. This asshole took all of that from her and them. And that makes me angry. Yeah, it's definitely wrong. It's wrong. All the way around, it's wrong. While we still just keep putting scumbags like that right back out. Did you see this shit in New York where these dudes beat up the cops and they just let them right back out? No. And then they come out on the news flipping everybody off. The country's going crazy, too. Yeah. Oh. As far as laws and stuff like that. Like... I don't know. We have got to do something. Something has got to be done. Yeah, I mean, from the drugs that are overrunning stuff, the fentanyl killing people, you know, people just running around shooting and stabbing and murdering, and there's barely any consequence for it. Nope. It's scary. So, uh, I got a present for you. Oh. I want to give you a tattoo and this is what I drew oh wow that's beautiful that's beautiful all right so where you want to put it you want to add any dates you want to do anything else to it no I like it just like that I don't know I want to put it somewhere where it can be seen okay well think about it cool. I'd like to set an appointment up 
and then I can get it done for you, and then I can add it into the end of this video as well. Okay. Because I know you've been wanting one. I, called, I have. I called Nate and asked him because I didn't know what to do. I was like, flowers, what, what? and then he said an angel, or I can't remember what else he said. But as soon as he said angel, I was like, I can do that. Yeah. I can make that work well. I can do a female angel that'll look nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. I'm talking about that. setting that up, man, and uh, make that happen, too. I appreciate you coming. You know, um, I know it's, I was looking forward to coming. Um, if this if this story can do anything and at least let a chick maybe think about it or make a dude think about saying some shit like that. If I mean? can reach one person, even just one person with what I've been through, you know, to help them in any way. OK, so with that, too, you want me to leave a link and they reach you somewhere? Where can they? What's your social media? Facebook. Okay, just under your name. Same mm -hmm. thing I'll put on the title, Terry Beaver. Yeah. So, yeah, if y'all want to reach out and, you know, send a comment or show some love for Sierra, man, um, you can definitely. Or if you need to talk, you know, if you experience this and, you know, I, I'm I'm there to help anybody any way I can. Nice. Sweet. So, yeah, drop a comment. Leave something for Terry, man. Um, I appreciate you coming and and. Being 100%, you know, it's hard to share shit like that. Yeah. Sometimes I get a little emotional with some of this shit, too. I thought this was going to be rougher than it is, but you said you're dried up, man. Yeah. Which I'm kind of glad of because you probably would have pulled tears out of me if you wasn't. Yeah. No, I, I I, don't know. It's like I've been left numb. Right. I don't know how else to put it. Times I feel like I need to cry. I can't. Hmm. I can't. All right. Well, we're going to chill for a minute. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for watching. Stick around for the next one.